Oh, hey, it might help if I open this. Yeah. There we go. Come on, focus. There we go. Hello again, YouTube. This is Charlie with House Call Auto Repair, and we're heading into Amherst, Massachusetts today. We're going to be working on a 2015 Toyota Corolla that, uh, due to recent activities or whatever you want to call it, has been sitting. And when the owner tried to take it out for a drive, it wouldn't move. Uh, he gave it a little gas, got a loud crunch, and then it started moving, and now the vehicle vibrates and shakes and does weird stuff. So we're going to go check out what happened and. I suspect that there's probably some really nasty rust pitting in the rotors from the brakes getting all rusted up solid and it's probably all it is but we'll find out when we get there all right we got a 2015 Toyota Corolla S we're gonna be checking out the brakes in this yeah, you look at those rotors they really don't look very healthy same all the way around we're gonna be checking this up pulling the wheels off and give this thing a thorough inspection. We got the rear front wheels off. And this is what we've got for rotors. And I know you guys can't feel this, but there is a, a significant lip on both the inside and outside. The inside's much worse. So we'll take all of this off and have a closer look. Well, we've already got these bolts loosened up. We'll get these out of here. Those set those down there. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get this caliper bracket taken off. Right, the bottom. Oh, wow! All right, breaker bar time. That's not moving. Well, these bolts are uh, good and stuck. All right, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go grab some penetrating oil. All right, we're back. Got the penetrating oil sprayed on there. We got a pet trainer down to catch all the mess. Get this bolt out of here now. Work it back and forth. Spray a little more in there. Because the threads are on the other side in here, so. And get a little bit, get these loosened up, get the caliper over the other side. Again, this is uh, one of the hooks. You know, I showed these a couple of times in a couple of the videos. They're bird feeder hooks. You pick these things up at Walmart for a couple of bucks. And hang it up over the coil spring. Hook it into the ear to break caliper. And then you can let the galloper hang off of that. And I'll try to get in here and get this. Okay, that one's loosened up a little bit. That's good. That's not too tight. Now we get a little play in here. We can get some oil down in between. And now I can work the oil into the threads. just so I don't have to fight with it all the way out. And both of those bolts out. Wow, that's pretty interesting. Wedged and stuck. Never had this happen before. I have literally never had a bracket get stuck between the rotor. Huh. 
it's kind of interesting. There we go. And it breaks, it breaks are stuck right in there. I already pulled the outboard out to show the customer how bad they were. But so I'm going to pop all of these hardware clips out and get all of this rust scaling out of here. And we're going to spray down here, spray a little in that hole, a little in that hole. And we got two small bolts. We'll thread those bolts into that little hole. They're going to aid in removing this rotor as this rotor is very stuck on here. Now we're going to tighten these in. Ooh, those are 12 millimeter, I think. Let's try the precise socket. Is 12 the magic size? Yes. Okay. It sounded like it popped. Good. I was just going to explain why I was doing this in short bursts because I don't want to strip the thread. But it seemed to pop. But that's how you get these off. I'll take these out because I'll use these for all the other rotors as well. These, I believe, are uh, the threading, I believe, is 6 by 125. Uh, don't quote me on that. I'm not positive, but. The brake caliper bolts are almost, these are probably uh, 1.5. So these threads right here are just a little bit more coarse. They don't really interlock. Same diameter though. So don't accidentally use these thinking they'll fit because you'll mess up these threads and you won't be able to reuse these bolts. So I've got little collections of all sorts of little hardware. Every time I go to the junkyard, I keep all the hardware. I save it all. It always, always comes in handy. And there's our rotor, and if you look right here real carefully, you can see this really obnoxious ridge all the way around. So the owner is out getting the, uh, the brake pads and rotors. We're doing all four all the way around on this today. Otherwise, axle looks good. I'll get you in here for another quick little look. The uh, Caliper looks good. There's no tears or snags in the boot. We'll give that a little spray with a brake cleaner. Sway bar lengths snug. Moves, but isn't torn up or anything anywhere. There's no physical damage to anything. The, the strut's good. It's clean. It's dry. ABS cables, no sign of wear or damage. Brake, brake hose is good. Everything's in place. No wear. Axle boots. The steering rack is looking good. So we're all set. Break down the other side. Still wearing my mask because he comes into close proximity and every every so often and I'll be uh, wearing it on and off throughout this video. But whenever my friend is uh, close by, his mother's ill and we just don't want to take any chances so all precautions are being taken so now we got to get the hardware clips out of here and yeah we can just go full gorilla and get knees out of here because well they're junk and they don't want to come out and they're stuck in there and yeah they is stuck and he is back well, we're going to get these out of here and start reconditioning this caliper bracket. Yep, I got all the hardware out. There's a lot of rust in there. This pin is stuck. And this pin turns, but it's pretty stiff. So we're going to pop these pins out, show you how to recondition these pins. Take these boots, slide the boot down off the pin. This side here, see all that rust? I'm going to take a little bit of penetrating oil, slide it, spray it right down inside that boot. Get it in there. Can's getting a little weak. We're going to have to repressurize the can. Might show you that little trick soon, too. How to repressurize a dead, dead spray can. Ugh. Gloves. One of these days I'll learn. The gloves that I've got are so tight that when I poke a hole in them, they pop. 
Now we're going to take the impact and we're going to slowly get this pin turning. There we go. Same thing with this one up here. That one's got no problem. That's going to be an easy one. This one here is going to be the stinker. Get going the other direction. direction. Okay, let's get this top pin out. That was easy. That's not too bad. Well, we're just going to clean and re-grease -grease that one. This one here is going to be the problem. So I'm going to put this camera down. And well, the camera's already down. Don't need to put it down. I'm going to figure out how I'm going to get this pin out. I think it's time for vice grips. There's my 25, 30 year old pair of vice grips. A re the original Irwin. Original Irwin vice grips. 25, 30 years old. Crikey. And I got all these little flattened out dent marks in the top of it to prove how badly I abused this thing. Let's clamp this on here. Don't have a vice. So this is the next best thing. And we're not getting anywhere with this, so. That's just gonna take quite a bit of effort. Surprised you ain't streaming me over there. I know. Uh, I'm just trying to use my phone while I got it open. Yeah, I see over in the background you hear there. Ah, God, this thing won't come out. Oh. All right, what would Eric do? Oh, I know what Eric do. Torch. I don't have one of those. No, that's what Eric would do. Eric and South Main Auto. You take a torch to this thing. What would Carol Baskin do? Ah. Ah. What would right. Carol Baskin do? This does not want to move. All right, let's try again. I'm going to throw my back out. Me too. You got it. No, I didn't. Okay. I just pulled it out of the vice grips again. Although, I think I did get it to move. I did get it to move. If you have trouble breathing, don't do this with a mask on. Oh, my God. Come on. Oh. Right, we got it a little further. I deserve extra, extra subscriptions just for this battle. Oh. Fight, the, fight the good fight. Ah, got it. Look at the ew. Ew. It look, looks like. Oh, I ain't gonna say what that looks like. Okay. In any case, we got it out. Put this in the drill. And clean it up. And we're back in a bit. Now we gotta get in here. Eric recommended these, and they're really, they really are good. Get right in here and just take that scaling right off. And I mean this, you see that bare metal right there? Just I mean this thing is like a hot knife in butter. And you get right in here, just clean all of this up so when we put the new hardware clips in, the brake pads can actually move. I like Eric's sandblaster, but again, I'm a mobile tech. I don't have that stuff. Yeah. And what I mean by mobile is that right there. And that's mobile. So I'll get this back on here again. Yeah. So I'll get these all cleaned up and grab the uh, silicone grease. Put some grease down on here before we put the hardware clips in so that this 
doesn't happen again or at least it slows it down dramatically and make sure in this case show you one of the old brake pads it isn't this part right here that rides under the under pressure in this particular case it's this little ear right here so we got to make sure that that ear the corresponding part on the bracket is also cleaned up clips even stuck right on the pad but and here we got these surfaces down in here this surface back here and then the one up here on the top we'll get those cleaned up and be right back take a little bit of the grease get that little quarter inch glob like i always do remember not to slice your finger up and just kind of put a light coating on all the surfaces that your hardware clips are going to come in contact with and I get a kick out of how when you hit the spot that turns purple. That's kind of neat. So I'll get this all coated in here. I'm going to do just like this here. And then we can go ahead and put the hardware clips in. All of these surfaces. But that little quarter inch dab is usually all you need to get all of these surfaces coated. And it's just to keep the elements from locking it all up again on you. Every once in a while I lubricate these parts with some blood, but just kidding. Alrighty. And I got all of that, and we'll go over and do the other side. And take the pin, the clean pin, I'm just gonna add a little bit of grease to it to help it. Spin it down in there, distribute that grease evenly. Slowly work the pin right in as I'm twisting it. And remember, pull on it, if it sucks it, you got a good seal, that side's good to go. Now we get to clean up this messy side and work on that one. So we'll be back as soon as we get done cleaning this all up because I got to get all of this yuck off of here and same out of the inside. I'm going to take this rubber piece off, squeeze it off to one side, and then push it off the end of the pin, get it out of the way so your pin is uh, clean and exposed like this. We're going to put this in a drill chuck, and we're going to give it a spin, put a file on here, clean all of this up, and we'll file down the burrs from the vice grips. We'll make this pin look right, brand new. Alrighty. So we've got the uh, pin. In the drill chuck, we've already started polishing it as you can see, but get it rotating slightly across it with the file. This is how to do your own machining. And there we go, one cleaned up pin. I'm gonna go ahead and grease this, put the rubber piece back on it, put it back in. I'm gonna take the pin. Grease. And gently rotate. Work it into the rubber. Here, get that little wrinkle, wrinkle again. It moves nice and easy. Go ahead and put, start putting the new parts on. Ooh, look at those black finished rotors. No need for brake cleaner here. We're gonna put some uh, goat juice or whatever Eric calls it on there. There you go, right there. Put some of this on. And just spray it around. Yeah. And we'll 
take our brand new rotor and slide that right on. And then we'll take the caliper bracket and start setting this up first. Put all these little hardware clips in. Remember these little rounded parts right here. Always stick on the outside. And when you're putting these on here, make sure that this edge that the brake pad is going to ride on is sitting over the back part here. And snap that right down into place like that. Repeat that with all four clips. And then you can go ahead and put the brake caliper bracket on. Get all four of those in place. Go ahead and put the bracket back on. We'll, uh, turn the wheel this way first. Just like doing it the first time, you always have a hard time finding the hole. And interrupted by the phone. What up? Yep, I'm right in the middle of uh, reassembling the front brakes, and then I got to get to the back brakes. Uh, videoing this is slowing me down quite a bit, but I should be done with this fairly soon. Oh yeah. Now, wh where's your, where's your, uh, the black beast up at the house or with you? Okay, no problem. Just uh, give, give me a call when you're back in the area. Alrighty. Right. They're black? Yep. Do they all start black? It's, it's just an anti-corrosive that they put on it. Sexy. And the only, the only reason they do that so that I don't get rusty in the storeroom. Break the bar, other side. Damn, Charlie, you telling somebody that this was gonna be quick. There's another quick going on here. <laughs> I mean, this is the bad wheel, though. Oh, uh, you know what's gonna end up happening? I'm gonna find something in the feedback or comments of this video. about how well I get all of this without the jack stands under it. Yeah? I never put the jack stands under it. Okay. It's kind of dumb. Because if I push too hard on this, tip the jack over, the car falls on the jack, and then what do I do? That's the only jack I got. <laughs> we, we could be strong. Man, not that strong. All right. Okay. Got some jack stands. <laughs> Pull all the brake pads out, compare them all. All four of them are the same. They're all the same thickness. They're all the same shape. None of these have any kind of a curve in the bottom of them. Therefore, they are all interchangeable. And then we got all these little black squealers. These, they give us four. So. We've got enough for two on each side, so that's one per brake pad. Always remember, they go on the leading edge. In this case, the car's rolling forward this way. Top is the leading edge, so the top of the, the brake pad is gonna be your leading edge. Snap your clip on. Make sure the little squealer side of it is facing down. Give you an idea here. This little squealer thing right here, that's gotta face down towards the surface that the brake is rubbing against. And then we'll put these in place.
the bottom in first. Top in lined up. Push down a little clip. Push a little clip in. Brake pads are in. Alright, now I can put the caliper back on. sure that we don't have any twist okay we still got to push the piston back old brake pad put it in place C clamp now just push the piston all the way back in everything goes back in nice and easy Piston boots not bubbling out. Nice and slow. All the way down and in, nice and easy. No resistance. All the way to the bottom without it getting stuck. I'll take a little bit of this. So look on grease again. A little on the ears. And then a little around the piston. Caliper back on. Yeah, make sure there's no twist in your line. Not bolt in. Clean paper towel. Hold it over, hold it over again. Spray it down with some brake cleaner. Good and wet. And then just work your way around the rotor and anything off of it that you may have gotten onto it. Dust off my hands. Stuff is terrible for your skin, but it cleans it up. And go ahead, 14 millimeter, tighten those back down. And then we can put the wheel back on. Extremely tight either. And take a little bit of a fluid film. Just give a little shot around that bolt that I just scraped all up. Now we move freely. Go ahead and put the wheel back on. Call the front done, clean up this mess, and get moved on to the back wheel. Front wheel is spinning that easy. Finish up the other side, get onto the back. 
that's all she wrote. There we go, got the wheels back on, got it on the ground. And a nice new black rotors in there. We're gonna be packing this up and moving it up to the hill into a different garage because we got a substantial threat of rain. We don't want to deal with that. Hopefully we got the batteries charged up enough that it's not gonna cause any issues. And it's getting this stuff cleaned up and ready to relocate. We're live again. Take two. All right, going live. We are live. Ha! I don't know how much editing I'm gonna have to do on this one. <laughs>